Hey guys, so welcome to my next video. In this video, I'm going to be making uh, Vintage Vogue 8789, which I, it's actually been out for a little while. I made it once uh, about two years ago. It turned out awful. Um, I'll go ahead and post a picture of that project in my post about this video in the description below. Um, when I made it a couple years ago, it stretched out like crazy. The neckline was all stretched out, it stretched out like down because of the weight of the skirt. So in this video, I kind of go into some of the reinforcements that I do in the bodice to make sure that it doesn't get literally bent out of shape. Um, also for the fabric that I'm using is actually this beautiful, and I've got like this little sample right here, this really beautiful starfish coral 100% uh, linen fabric that I got from Brightex Fabrics. Uh, it's so luxurious, it sews like butter, and uh, it's this like medium to to, to lightweight sort of linen. Um, what's nice about this particular linen is that it's really high quality. So um, if you're ever purchasing linen, you can kind of take a look at how many of the little nubs and like how, how much texture it has. Um, the less of the little num nubs, the better. It just means that there's longer staples on the fibers. So anyway, I hope you guys really like this video. If you guys have any questions, just go ahead and leave them down below and uh, let's get started. So I've actually made this uh, made this dress before a couple years ago and the number one thing that I had an issue with was the stretching out of the neckline. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of wing, uh, you know, interfacing the neckband. So I'm just going to go ahead and just put this over the facing piece and then I'm just going to pin it in place and just chop it out and stick this interfacing to the facing. Uh, that way I know that it's not going to stretch out over time. two different types of darts on this particular bodice. Uh, on the back, there's these really plain straight darts, which is no problem to sew. The tricky ones are the ones on the front, actually. Uh, in my case, because I have a bigger chest, I'm gonna be doing more of a curved dart. So basically the shape is like this on the pattern piece. I'll actually be uh, taking a picture of that on the blog post that goes with this video. Um, just so you guys can see just how much of a dramatic curve I'm adding to the start. Uh, it actually, it's pretty easy to sew, but leaving little markers on your uh, paper, or I'm sorry, on your pattern piece itself makes it easier for you to trace that line essentially with your sewing machine. So as you're working on this portion here, just make sure not to move your pattern pieces too much. Remember, everything's cut on the bias, so any weird pulling or tugging that you do on it will stretch that part out. So here the front is done and ready to go. And the back is done as well. So you can kind of see that the front and the back look almost exactly alike. Thank you. 
As I said earlier, uh, this bodice is gonna stretch out. Uh, it's actually completely done on the bias, so again, you know, concerns to stretch out. We've already taken care of the neckline, but now we have to take care of the shoulders. So what I'm gonna do here is, as I'm gonna sew the shoulders, I'm gonna sew the shoulders as normal, and then right as I finish, I have this grow grain, cross grain, grow grain, people pronounce it differently, ribbon. It's like a, it's a cotton ribbon uh, that's gonna be super soft against the skin. So once I sew the uh, shoulder seam, what I'm gonna do is, I'm trying to find my shoulder again. Um, what I'm gonna do is press open the seams here and then sew this to the seam and this will create a little bit of extra reinforcement that feels really good against the shoulder so that the shoulders don't droop and get out of whack. So once your bodice is completely sewn up, you can go ahead and start to interface your facings on the uh, for the bodice. Uh, this is pretty quick and easy. Um, you know, I use I prefer to use like a mesh interfacing, but uh, you know, depending on the type of garment and the fabric that you use, you'll probably want to use something different. Uh, because the fabric that I'm using is a linen, I just wanted something that would be really light and I would be hardly able to feel once I wear it. So at this point I am turning in the edge of those facing pieces just so that I can stitch them down. I didn't do too much uh, finishing on this garment in terms of taking care of the raw edges. I just kind of turned under any edge that would have been a problem and did a quick little stitch. And here I am finishing up getting that facing ready to be sewn into the garment which just kind of tuck it in there, put some pins and then stitch it in place. So after a good pressing of your bodice, you go ahead and get started on these skirt pieces. Um, luckily, this particular skirt is just a giant rectangle skirt with four panels. So uh, in my case, I just went ahead and cut out those giant pieces. I didn't trace off any pattern pieces for this. Uh, stitched them up really quickly, just some straight stitches, and then gathered the top. Um, as I mentioned in a previous video, my Gertie, uh, you know, sew along video, I do two rows of stitches and then you want to gently move those gathers along, pin them in place evenly as best you could, and then after you kind of get all those gathers exactly where you want them, you want to go ahead and take them to the iron to be pressed. So here I am working on my ironing board and pressing and, and steaming those gathers so they don't wiggle as I work. Cool, take your time stitching the skirt to the top and here I am kind of adjusting the gathers and now my dress is coming together, it's almost done. All right, so I'm doing a lap zipper as per the instructions for this particular pattern. I kind of hand basted the opening closed, then I basted in my zipper uh, to that closed opening. Turned my garment inside out. You can kind of see the basting lines there. And then uh, I went ahead and sewed a rectangle around that opening where the zipper was and then pulled out all the basting stitches and moved on to the waist stay. Now if you're not too familiar with waist stays, I'll actually be doing a video soon regarding what they are, how to use them, how to put them in. But just for the purposes of this video, this is essentially pretty simple and basically how it's put in. But uh, there's definitely a little bit of like time and consideration that you have to think about if you're deciding to use a waist stay, which I highly recommend if you're making vintage pieces that have really heavy parts of a garment. 
Cool, so here I am putting the hem. Uh, I just kind of folded it up three inches and I put some rayon seam binding, but I ended up going with uh, some regular bias tape. And in this shot here, it's just a really quick cummerbund that came with the pattern. So I hope you guys very much enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun shooting it just because it was nice to work on a project that I'd done in a really long time and kind of give it new life and uh, interpret it a little bit differently. So I hope you guys uh, can please leave your comments down below. Any questions, I'll go ahead and answer them. I read every comment. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe, all the places and all the stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>